So in this video, we're going to wrap up the discussion of the DC machine, at least in the context of what we've seen so far. And we are going to present a, first a little bit of a summary, and then we will look at the models for control. So let's jump right in. We have a model, the circuit model for our DC machine. Looks something like this. Maybe we should be a bit neater. Uh, this is the armature circuit, as you're aware. Point. This is the field circuit. This. And you have on this, we call this the armature voltage VA. This is called the field voltage VF. This is the, uh, well, I think we defined it going the other way. This is the field current IF. This is the armature current IA. This is the armature inductance, uh, field inductance, this is the field resistance, this is the armature resistance, this is the back EMF, we called it E, and I suppose we can also call this thing here, maybe we can write this on the other side, F, and then we can define this thing here, although we did this previously, this is D lambda F by DT. This is the circuit model that we've used, and we can summarize the model, I mean, the equations, I guess, relevant equations for the purpose of control and modeling are the following. So we have this plus I A R A uh, equals V A minus E, and then we have E equals K phi omega M, and we have T M equals K phi I A. We have T shaft will equal T M. So that's the one that's produced by the machine, I guess, if there's no losses, or the electromagnetic torque. And then we can say minus T loss if we are considering losses, which we didn't in any of the previous cases, but you will probably, and if you want an accurate model, and we will, we'll see what that looks like uh, in terms of the overall modeling of the, of the machine. Uh, D lambda F by DT is equal to VF minus IF RF. Of course, this is just a KVL. And lambda F, we said, is equal to K phi. Um, well, we also said it was equal. We, I guess we can go the other way. Well, no, we didn't define it this way. Sorry. Uh, I was thinking about a different variable. So we can, this is defined as K prime phi. And sometimes phi is uh, defined as k phi, um, so then it's k prime k times phi. In any case, I mean, we'll leave it as k prime like this, and we'll deal with these as we need to. Um, but I guess we can put an arrow and say sometimes this is lambda equals k prime k phi. And these are all parameters, and these parameters and constants will be given to you um, according to whatever model you have. And the last thing, I guess, is that the field current IF is equal to 1 over KF times K phi. And these uh, equations, I guess, are you one, I guess, I guess gets, we get from one to the other. Uh, and they're related. So that's kind of how we, that's the significance of that. Then we can move on. And we can look at, I guess we can, we can we can model or we can imagine because we have not yet uh, we have not ex explicitly stated what the rotational losses uh, what their form is or what they depend on but in general we can see that the rotational losses t r sub r o t will have some constant component will have some component that's not an i that should be a one uh, will have some component dependent on the rotational speed and then will depend on the rotational speed squared as well. So this is the rotational losses. And then you can say that the rotational, so that's, that's the loss of the torque, I guess. And then the power, uh, similarly, will just be this multiplied by the speed. So the constant term is also st speed dependent now. Alpha 1 omega m squared plus alpha 2 omega m cubed. Right? And so in the shaft, uh, we've already defined, I guess we can, 
I guess we can, we, 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 we called it loss there. So maybe we can get rid of this and start saying loss. Let's just say this wrote here. So it's for rotational uh, because it's for rotational losses. And that's what these two things are. These are rotational losses. Uh, and therefore you can say that P shaft is equal to PM minus the rotational losses there. So we can then uh, use these to develop a block diagram for the overall uh, vehicle driven by a DC machine. So in a previous video, we've already looked at, and so I'll, I'll, describe, I'll, I'll link that in the description, we've looked at the vehicle model already, like just purely the vehicle considering an ideal, or it's driven by just an ideal, like generic thing, where it just, it just receives the torque. But in this, uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to look at how uh, the, the model changes if it's driven by a DC machine. So if, you're, if it's driven by a DC machine, you'll have the following situation. It'll look something like this. And this accounts for all of the different components that we are discussing uh, in this video as well as the previous ones that we've looked at uh, well, so why don't we draw it immediately? So this and this may seem overwhelming, but once you really break it down, it's a relatively straightforward process uh, for drawing this model. As long as you can understand all of the different components and where all of these things come from, it's uh, really quite straightforward. So I think we'll have to move all of this down at some point. So I want to move this over here. Why don't we then move all of this a bit and also scroll down a bit space. And then we can take Take this arrow here, and this here. And again, it might just seem like I'm drawing things arbitrarily, but I will, I will outline everything once we get, uh, once we get to that point of. Here, some block, have another block, bigger. And I usually, I mean like to do this step by step because I know some students struggle with how to develop these block diagram type models from equations because it's not always obvious or it's not intuitive. I guess we skill is what I'm trying to say. Skill that you have to work on like any other skill. So what do we have? We have here, this is VA and this is from arm current loop. So there'll be a control loop. And again, I'll describe these control loops as well. And this is going to be omega m from vehicle. And then there's going to be a vf field So those are your inputs to this. Here you'll have one over S L A plus R A. So that's your first order plant that models your differential equation. Here you'll have alpha one and alpha two. And the input here will be omega M and then this will be omega M squared. And of course, this is the same omega M that is coming from the vehicle. I just don't want to write from vehicle every single time. And this, the measurement here, or the, the signal here, is the same signal as the one that's here. And since this term is constant, this term here is just alpha naught. This here is T shaft. And this will go to the vehicle. And again, this is the vehicle model. So, so if you remember the vehicle model, we saw the first term on the left was TM. It was multiplied by the gear ratio divided by the radius of the wheels. And then it was converted into the force and all that type of stuff. So this is the torque that would enter that block diagram. So here, this is going to be TM. 
So that's your developed torque based on all of this. <clears throat> and here we have RF. Here we have one over S, K, K prime. So this will give you K phi here. And this is lambda F here. This is D lambda F by DT. And this comes from your field current equation. And this would be your magnetization curve. Or if you choose to approximate it using one over KF, you can use that here as well. So I'll call this mag curve. I'll just make a note. Can also use one over KF uh, there as well. So is that what we called it? Did we call it KF? Yes, we called it KF. So one over KF is the slope that relates the two. And that comes from here, right? So IF and then K phi goes into here, you get IF at the output, and that's what feeds back, gets, gets fed back here. Uh, VF minus that, according to, according to, where's the equation for the field? This, so VF minus IF times RF gives you the <clears throat> uh, D lambda F by DT, and which is exactly what you're seeing here, right? So, so this is the model. Now again, this is a model of the of, of how the machine behaves. This is not a control. This is well. This is not control. First of all, this is the model you would be required to implement in your control, based on whatever parameter you're trying to control. So if you're trying to control V A, then you'll have to give V A a, a command from some control loop, feed the result back to that control loop, and then generate the set point from that control loop. Uh, this in itself is a representation of how the machine behaves. It is not the machine itself. So this is an abstract definition, I guess, definition or representation of what the overall machine characteristics uh, follow based on the derivations we've seen in the previous sets of videos. And I guess one thing we missed here is that these, uh, these losses, the sum of these losses here, is, or the sum of these components is the rotational. Well, we used red, so let's use red for that as well. probably shouldn't have used red. We probably should use pink because we've used pink everywhere else. So this is TM, this is T rot, and then this is going out to the shot to the vehicle, so we'll leave that as red. So again, this would go to your to your vehicle model. And the vehicle model, if you remember, and I'll just I guess we can so that would do something like this, and it would go in, you would have your gear ratio, you would have one over R D and then you would add to that um, all of your rotational losses, uh, sorry, your resistance model and such, and and so on. So I'm not going to add all of that here, otherwise the, the diagram will get very complicated very quickly. But that's kind of what we're doing in this situation here. So this is now generating the torque that is going to your vehicle, whereas before we just had a we had a we had a variable we called it TM, I believe, and we said it was coming from the from the machine, and then we had Omega M, which was going to the machine. So now we know what those things, uh, what, what the origin of those two variables is. So we can sometimes, well actually oftentimes, we can lump the resistance forces with the rotational losses. And so all these components here can be added to the resistance model here. So if you remember, there's a resistance model here with the aerodynamic drag, with the uh, rolling resistance and so on. You can lump all of the components, all of these rotational losses, into that part there, and and you can have a simplified model if you like. Uh, it makes no difference whether you add them here or you add them there. So it just changes the model differently. So instead of having the rotational losses uh, separately and the resistance model separately, you'll have the two together. So the next thing I want to look at, or we should want to look at, or I want to discuss with you, is the armature current control. So the armature current control will follow something like this. So the armature current control, you'll have the control loop, I mean, uh, will look something like this. It's a, it's a very standard, traditional type of uh, control loop. And its purpose is to, as the name suggests, control the armature current. So we'll do the following. 
and this would be implemented inside of your inside of your uh, well this is again this is an abstraction and you can use it to model whatever uh, whatever machine you may be dealing with and in doing so you can accurately predict what the characteristics of that control loop will be so this is going to be let's say it's a PI and we can call this K well we used pink for the inside so let's use pink for the inside here as well this will be K A S so it's compensator with sub A and this here is going to be a we call it a, sometimes it's called a four quadrant chopper when discussed in the context of machines other people might refer to it as a full bridge basically basically uh, it is a it is a converter the PWM converter so I guess it would look something like this and you would control this converter and so this is not you would control this converter to basically provide the desired value of VA. So you would give it a set point for VA, and then it would generate for you an armature voltage according to that set point. And you would use PWM with that converter in order to uh, in order to generate the desired set point. So here you would have omega m and here you would have k phi this is being subtracted and this is 1 over s plus l a r a which is the plant so this is 1 over s l a plus r a and you're imagining that i guess this is kind of a bad this is kind of a bad uh, box around but this is basically your model of your armature I guess we can say and this would be I a which is then fed back here there should be a minus sign here because it's a feedback control so this is your compensator this is your armature voltage command or set point or reference this is the actual armature voltage synthesized by the PWM converter which is this four quadrant chopper they call it the armature current command uh, is I, I a star and then the actual current command is I a now the reason you need to have a four quadrant chopper in this case and you can't just get away with with one or two is you need to be able to have different combinations right so you have in the in the I guess when you discuss the the chopper you have a V a and I a and you should be able to operate I mean the the the, the fact that it's a four quadrant chopper means it can operate in the first and in all of them, I should say. No, I shouldn't just say the first. I should say it can operate in all of them. So the voltage and the current can be positive, negative, and whatever. In any combination. They're not limited, is the, is the point. And the reason they shouldn't be limited is because if you remember, IA controls the torque, it says. Well, what we said, I should I should say. Not, it says. Nothing says that. We said that. Uh, because K, because T is K phi IA, right? So IA should be able to go in any direction, um, positive, negative, and so on. Uh, and then VA, as a result, should be able to also do that. And in order to have that, you need to have this thing be a four-quadrant chopper. So that, um, I mean, and if, if you're not familiar with this, this is basically a full bridge converter. You can you can study these. These are very, very standard, I guess, and one of the simpler, simpler PWM uh, converters. And um, very useful, very versatile type of converter and very well well known and well studied so this is for the armature current now we can move on and we can look at the field current and the field current control loop is similar except I guess it's slightly simpler so here we have a compensator here we'll also have another converter but this converter will be different slightly simpler um, here we'll have the model of the field circuit and your output. And this is your, I mean, the model of the circuit itself, we, in control theory, is referred to as the plant. So this is the plant, I guess you can say. And this here is so. 
and we can say that this thing, the model of the plant, our plant. I guess we can say the same thing about the thing at the top, although we already discussed that. So these are being subtracted since they're feedback signals. And this will be IF star, and this will be IF, the actual signal. Uh, here, we'll call this the mag curve. So that's the magnetization curve. And remember, it can also be 1 over KF if we want it to be. Uh, this will be this will be K, K prime. This is k phi, and this block here is a 1 over s, and this here is an rf, which is, again, this is the equation, right? So we, we derived this equation, or we didn't derive this equation, we, we showed this equation, and we know it to be true from our our, our understanding of, of uh, DC machines. And here, instead of a four-quadrant chopper, we have something much simpler. So we have a one-quadrant chopper here. So we only need, we don't need this current to be bidirectional um, for the field circuit. We So we have here instead a one quadrant chopper. And here we can say this is V, well, let's use pink again here because that's what we've always done. So this will be VF star. Star should be in the superscript. My apologies. And this is VF Right, so the field voltage does not need to be positive or negative, or sorry, it does not need to be negative. Uh, so in this case, if we have the same type of uh, VA, IA, we only need this condition because we only need to control, uh, sorry, not A, it should be F. Uh, we only need to control it in the positive because we never need to reverse any directions here or anything like that. So we reverse the torque because we need to slow down and we need to reverse and go backwards sometimes. But that, that has no... There's no, uh, there's no significance to that in this case. So, this is the generic. Um, this is the generic. Well, not yet. So why don't we add here K F S? And this is the generic. And this I guess can be a PI in this case as well. But this is the generic model of the field current uh, control. And so again, this is the compensator. This is your field voltage command. This is your field voltage at the actual field voltage whole thing is your plant, this is your field current, and um, your, you can simplify this if you would like. I guess, I suppose that this can be simplified as a 1 over Kf, which we already discussed before. And if that's the case, then your overall plant can be simplified and you can actually make this uh, a sim more simplified control loop. Uh, so, so the way that we can do that, for instance, is if we consider the plant, if we consider the plant to look something like this, and again, this is an extra step, I guess. You don't necessarily have to, but I suppose we can because it's always nice to simplify stuff. So this is the plant that we've drawn in the yellow box, and the, the, the labels of the boxes are as follows, 1 over Kf, and again, I'm assuming Kf here. I'm not assuming the magnetization curve anymore. That's the sort of significance of this analysis. So this is VF and this is IF. And this should be a subtraction here. And if we if this is true, then we can we can we can write the following. And here we know that IF S over VF of S equal to K K phi, or sorry, KK prime over KF S divided by one plus K, K prime, RF over K. This is just writing the, the closed loop here, right? So this is a relatively simple uh, expression to arrive at once you've seen this loop. Okay, so we can write, we can rewrite this as 1 over RF times 1 over KF over K, K prime, RF S plus 1. Now this thing, this whole expression resembles basically the very well-known uh, 1 over tau S plus 1 uh, form, right? And this, therefore, is your time constant, right? So this is a time constant. 
and this is a DC gain, right? So this is a, I mean, in control theory, we do this all the time where we, where we model things in a one over tau s plus one. Uh, sometimes it's like a k times whatever this, or a k over tau s plus one, and k is your gain, DC gain, or steady state gain, sometimes it's referred to. So if we let, let's say let uh, LF equal KF over K, K prime, then we can say IF S over VF S is equal to one over RF times one over tau F S plus one. And then we can define tau F as being this time constant as being LF over RF. So we have this, this thing of inductance property or quantity or units, whatever you want to call it, but we can define this as being a time constant. And so now what we have is this, we've also modeled basically as a, as, as a trans, as a first order one over S uh, type of block. Whereas in the previous case, it was, it, it was much messier. Um, now we have it that looks very much similar to the armature current, which was a one over S L A plus R F or R A. Sorry. If we go back up and we can look at that. So this was a, was a simple first order, um, plant. Now, as opposed to having all of this, we can combine, we can combine it, lump it together and turn it into a single transfer function. So we can redraw then the entire field circuit control loop as follows. So we simplified our we simplified our um, loop to look something like this. Now our plant is just a single block and following. So this is fraction here. This is I star. This is I F. This inside of this block will be one over R F over tau F S plus one. This was our chopper, right? We said this was the one quadrant chopper. And since the one quadrant chopper has a gain of approximately one, I'll just represent it by a gain block of approximately one. And here would be VF. And this is F star. And this inside here will be K F S I. And I guess you can call this an error if you'd like, but we'll leave it this way for now. So the reason, I mean, one thing I changed here is this, this is approximately one. So we assume that the converters are highly efficient, no losses. So whatever signal you give it is exactly the signal you get out. So the gain is approximately one of the converter, um, especially in a one quadrant chopper it is. In certain cases you might have gains that are not one, um, but in this case for a one quadrant chopper, the gain is approximately one. So a couple of things to note, the armature current control loop should be fast since the acceleration requirements require fast responses. Um, this is not difficult, obviously. Well, not it, maybe it's not obvious. So it's not difficult since the armature inductance is small and the PI can be tuned to, to, to provide a fast response. So you can always tune this to give you a fast response, especially if uh, this LA, sorry, not this PI, this PI, uh, this PI can be tuned for a, appropriately to give you a fast response for this LA. Now, on the other hand, the field current loop, which is this, and for some reason my, sorry about that, uh, the field current loop does not need to be fast since IF is linked to omega m, uh, IF star or IF in general, just that field current, and therefore it changes slowly. So regardless, it can't be made very fast since LF is typically much larger than LA. So you can get away with a slower controller with this and a faster controller, you need a faster control, controller response when you have, uh, or when you're dealing with the armature current. So with that, that's that marks the end of this video. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Like and subscribe to support the channel. And I hope this was helpful again. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.